this is based on what I think works and does not work, looking back on my long life. So don't roll your eyes at me. I promise I won't bore you with a, with a bunch of numbers. You know, financial advice tends toward the same subjects like, like budgeting and investing, saving and retirement. But I would put, but I would not put those at the top of the list. None of that even matters. It doesn't matter if you make poor life choices. Number one is marriage and family. Almost no amount of effort can overcome the mistake of marrying the wrong person or having a relationship with the wrong person. I used to half seriously tell my daughter that it's just as easy to fall in love with a rich person as it is a poor person. The only problem is, as you know, there's just not enough of the rich people to go around. It's supply and demand. When you're took your economics course, you have your X and your Y axis. And somewhere there is an equilibrium between the, the okay, forget that. I think you get the point already. If you make a bad choice with your relationships, it can mess you up for the rest of your life. Marriage is a partnership and a contract. Divorce should be a last resort rather than an easy out. A failed marriage relationship means two households with a lot of duplicative expenses and a lot of distraction. If children are involved, it's, it's so much more worse, and you better have a good reason then for breaking up. But most people really don't. I used to tell my daughter jokingly, but I wanted to see her future life partner's last three income statements and a current audited balance sheet. But seriously, do seek someone who is serious about money and not a spender who is just happy to, to swipe the card to pay for everything. And don't have more children than you can afford and take care of. They shouldn't become life's they shouldn't become society's burdens. They should be yours. You brought them into the world. And don't look for someone through mindless dating. You don't need someone to go steady, especially when you're young, so, you, so that you'll fit in with everybody else. Rather, invest in a good book on courtship. Courtship is how my grandparents got together when life was harder and, so, and they weren't so prosperous and they didn't have a government safety net to bail them out of their bad life decisions. Two is having a healthy lifestyle. We all know that obesity, diabetes, and drug and alcohol abuse are at record highs. If you fall into any one of these, it is tough to get out of it. At the least, it will throw a huge obstacle in your way to having the best life you can have. It will cost you in terms of time, money, profession, and relationships. The best money advice really includes, must include a healthy lifestyle, which will pay dividends your whole life through. Maintaining a healthy diet is not easy with all the food and the restroom advertising. Who doesn't like a greasy burger with some fries in it and a soda pop, unless you're maybe a, a vegan? Too many people simply give up and live on convenience food. They rationalize that they do not have time to eat properly and exercise requires a consistent regimen, contrary to our sedentary lifestyle. So much easier being a couch potato. Yeah. Even in retirement, though, 
you must strive for a healthy lifestyle. And so I try to mostly. Number three is debt, credit, and spending. Now we're getting into the real financial stuff. Debt is one of the early, one of the ugliest four-letter words. Bad debt is that which is mostly spent on unnecessary consumption above basic food, clothing, and reasonable living expenses. You don't need to go to Disney World to own the finest clothes or, or the newest car when you're 16, or I tell you, at any age. If your friends believe that, then shallow they are indeed, and you really don't need them because they'll mess your life up. They'll pull you back to their level. Consumer debt can eat you alive with ever-increasing compounding of interest on unpaid balances. The consumption and advertising culture is there to lead you down the, the broken path of destruction and doom. Oops, I sound like my own grandfather. But there is good debt too. Good debt can be money that you borrow to buy a reasonably priced and sized home. I always had a disdain for the McMansions in the gated communities or wherever you see them. When the Great Recession hit, a number of those people lost their homes and had to downsize. But we did because we lived in a reasonably priced home. Time for a sip. <clears throat> How sweet it is. <clears throat> and we owned our home free and clear. Another good kind of debt can be that which finances your college education or vocational school. Pick a course of study that will pay you money so that you can pay back what you borrowed. Attend a local college if one is in commuting distance. Be wary of people who say they're going to, people you're going to vote for that say they're going to pay off everything. Be sure that one day, if the, as the government spends more money for entitlements like that, you'll be paying it back. What about those of you who are out there working hard you saved your money and went to and attended a, a reasonably priced school and picked a good profession where you could pay your loans back. You probably look, you'll probably be very disgusted if people, if others get their loans all paid off. And don't plan a silly over the top wedding unless you want to pay for some of it yourself. You shouldn't stick that on your parents. My parents and grandparents spend very little on theirs compared to today. They had a simple church wedding and they had a nice big cake at one of the relatives' homes. In fact, my wife and I unbelievably spent nearly nothing. We eloped with the parents' consent, both of our parents' consent, because her parents were far away. In fact, they were on another continent entirely. So it was logistically very difficult to bring all those people together. Don't worry, I have only a couple of pages left. Having good credit can save you when you need it, but it's best to use it very sparingly. Keep the limit low. Look around for the best interest rate. Stay under that limit, a reasonably low limit, okay? Good credit is like having a good name and a good reputation. 
And this is some of the best money advice that I can give you. Remember to put aside a tithe in offering a contribution or donation for those people who are less fortunate through no fault of their own. I draw a distinction there. I'd much rather help people who, who had financial problems because of, of no mismanagement or no bad lifestyle choices on their part. But when you give money to a charity, of course, you can't differentiate. It goes into the big pot for everybody. Growing up, and with my own family, we never had one single garage sale. We gave everything to the various charities, and we gave a lot. I gave away some things I wish I'd kept. I don't have any, I don't like having a lot of clutter. Keep good records. I made my poor little daughter and my wife sit down with me in the closet between Christmas and New Year's every single year after my daughter was about 10 or 11 years old. And I made her go through every single piece of paper in the year's files. Or rather, I went through it. And then I explained to her the disposition. Should it be saved, shredded, should you keep it for your taxes? Wasn't that fun? It was just another beautiful Hallmark family moment. But it did her some good because she's very responsible to this day. Item number four is insurance. Lean in with me now. You should have enough insurance so that you're covered from life's major catastrophes. You cannot insure against everything. Don't try to. And don't let anyone sell you insurance for everything. You'll need insurance for your home, automobile, disability, health, and liability. You need life insurance if children are involved or a non-working spouse or a parent or someone else who depends on you. Someone who would face financial hardship if something happened to you. The best money advice always includes an insurance component. Just don't buy unnecessary insurance that a lot of the media and agents will try to sell you. You can't reasonably cover everything, so just cover the major risks. Number five is an emergency fund. This is another kind of insurance. You need three to six months of savings in a money market account, depending on your debts and your obligations. Your emergency savings is in case you have an unforeseen need for cash, like a car repair and an illness a home repair. It'll be closer to six months if you have a mortgage or if you have an, an uncertain income, like if you work on, like per the job or on commission, or if, you're, if your income is not even throughout the year. When building your emergency fund, you should invest only the minimum necessary to meet your employer's match if you have a 401k, 403b, or whatever. After you build your emergency fund, then you must start saving and investing. For real. This is the last page we're coming to. So please don't write out or click me off now. Number six is saving budgeting and investing. This is the real the real deal here. Savings is the cash that you keep in a safe place. What happened to my camera? I'm going to the low power mode. Hope this still works. It's the cash you keep in a safe place for intermediate needs like a down payment on a home money on which you can earn a better return 
and a money market. Budgeting is important, but don't worry about tracking everything. Make a general budget at the start of the year and check it every three months. And put at least 10 to 20% of your savings, save that much, and then you live on the rest. Investing is for your long-term money. If you're unsure what to invest in, just buy a target date fund where the asset allocation is based on your age. The younger you are, the higher your equity position should be. And watch the fees. Be careful of the salespeople. You should concentrate on your profession, saving money, and let your investments ride. Verify your Social Security periodically, too. Or whatever country you're in listening to this, whatever pension scheme they have. I would have been better off myself just owning a target date fund, but they didn't have those when I was young. I had to be, they didn't have index funds either. So I had to deal with brokers, insurance agents, and a lot of shady advisors. But I really didn't care much about money when I was younger either. My mistake. Finally, you should be financially secure. I was never concerned about making a lot of money and getting rich. If you, if you enjoy your work, it's not work anyway. Have good friends, a good family, and take care of yourself. I made a lot of stupid mistakes in my life. We won't go into those right now. I go into some of them during my other, my other videos. I have a few, reg a few regrets, but not too many, and I hope that you won't have too many regrets either whenever you look back. And I, I hope that you found this video useful. I guess it's probably the most important one that I could ever make. Anybody can, can read poetry and, and eat big meals, or small ones like I do, tell stories, but I really want this to help you. I want to do something more to help people. And I hope this helps all the young people and everybody who's watching this. That's all I have. This is Trip, and thank you for tuning in this far.